is this surprising fact that so much of what governs our universe are so finely tuned. If you allow the parameters to change by a lot of it, nobody can really say what that cosmos would be like. One explanation simply would be there are many, 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 many universes. The specialness of this universe goes away if it's one of a grand collection of possibilities. I do think that there's something holding this all together, but if we're talking about the thing that governs the interactions of all material objects, essentially, does that governing thing itself have to step outside of materiality and we get into this realm which physicists often dare not tread of, of talking about immaterial influence on yeah. material things? Yeah, look, do we step outside of materiality? Look, I'm open to that idea. I would be thrilled if that were the ultimate answer. How remarkable if there is some grand non-physical entity that is responsible for the universe and the fact that we're here. I would love to learn about that and it would be enormously exciting. The problem as a physicist is I can't go any further than that excitement. I can't analyze it. Yep. I can't investigate it. I can't write down mathematical equations. By definition, it stands outside the physical, the thing that a physicist focuses upon. So I don't find it that interesting. Mm. I don't say it is impossible. It just doesn't occupy my attention when I can't go any further in the analysis. And so my perspective has been to say, sure, maybe. But now I'm put that to the side and see how far I can get just focusing on the physical, just focusing on the tools that we have developed. And the fact that we've been able to go as far as we've been able is, is deeply thrilling. Mm. One of the most celebrated descriptions of the universe that has uh, come about is this surprising fact that so much of what governs our universe the, the strength of various laws, for example, the mass of various particles, are so finely tuned that some theorists do suggest the multiverse we were talking about earlier to the extent that like, the only way to explain the fact that it could have been so many ways and is this way is that this is just one of many universes. Another suggestion for that, f from that is to extrapolate and say, well, there must be some kind of necessary reason why these laws are the way they are. That's the kind of thing that the physicist is looking for. The third option is this sort of supernatural intelligence. I understand what you're saying, that the physicists can't go beyond the physical, but we can like extrapolate explanations from the physical data, right? Like in the same way that if I were to look at some evidence around me, if we all left this room and somebody came in and saw that there were some glasses on the table and saw that there was a book placed kind of in the middle of the table and all this kind of stuff, that they didn't see any human beings, they didn't see any agents, but they can just extrapolate from the arrangement of, of the descriptions that they see of, of the way the room is there must have been somebody there. In the same way, the physicists might not be able to sort of look beyond the material, but can they look at the strength of the, of the strong and weak nuclear forces and think, I can't see any evidence of design directly, but I can extrapolate from that, that there must be some kind of intelligence behind the universe. Yeah, so bear in mind, number one, often people do say that if you change the value of the physical parameters mm -hmm. just a little bit, the universe as we know it goes away. The problem with that is we can only do that analysis if you change the parameters by a little bit. If you allow the parameters to change by a lot of it, not a little bit, and you allow many of the parameters to change simultaneously, nobody can really say what that cosmos would be like. Hmm. And so it's possible that there are patches in parameter space where you would get different kinds of universes that perhaps would give rise to different living systems. And then each living system in its universe looks around and says, wow, this universe is so special. It must be that there's some kind of, you know, grand design that got us here. But they're all saying that in their own parameter space because they're all making this mistake of only looking in a small neighborhood around the point in parameter space where they exist. So that's mm, point number one. You don't want to dismiss too quickly yep. by saying it all goes away unless it's precisely as we've seen. 
But it is the motivation for the multiverse, another motivation, because one explanation simply would be there are many, 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 many universes in which the parameters have all different values across those many universes. And in most of those universes, the conditions are not amenable to living systems like human beings. But in one of those or a small number of those universes, the conditions are amenable. And of course, we're in one of those universes because we could not exist in any of the others because the conditions are not correct. You know, the analogy is if you go into a clothing shop and you want to buy a sports coat, and you say, I want to buy a sports coat, and you see only one on the rack, and the person brings it over and it fits you perfectly. You're like, wow, that is so fortunate that it was just the right size to fit me. Mm. But if you go into an actual clothing shop, when there's hundreds of different sports jackets on the rack of all different sizes, when the person comes and brings you one that fits, you're not surprised. Of course, there's one among the many that works for you. Yeah. And so if you have many jackets, it's obvious why one will fit. If you have many universes, it's also pretty obvious why one will fit the conditions necessary to our existence. And so the specialness of this universe goes away if it's one of a grand collection of possibilities. Yeah. Uh, if I went into a shop and they had a sports jacket in just my size, I'd feel pretty, pretty special. I'd feel pretty chuffed about that. If I discovered that actually they'd gone into the back and picked from a billion different possible suit jacket sizes, uh, I'd be a little bit, I'd be a little disappointed by that. I'd be kind of upset. Uh, do you feel a bit nihilistic at the prospect that that it seems amazing, everything is perfectly tuned for us, and but actually, maybe not. Maybe we just happen to be in one of billions of universes. I guess that's not where my self worth comes from. You know, <laughs> I sort of don't look at the specialness of yeah. the universe or my place within that special universe. Rather, what fires me up is the fact that a collection of particles called a human brain can coalesce through an evolutionary dynamics to yield a structure that can think and feel and love and emote and create and illuminate and figure out quantum mechanics and figure out general relativity and come up with the idea of a multiverse and describe black holes and predict the magnetic moment of the electron. And that to me is the amazing thing that matter, not infused with any divine force, not in my view, can through the bare laws of physics come together and do what it does. Hmm. One person looks at the universe and thinks it's so grand and so brilliant that, man, I slot right into this and they find their sense of belonging. Whereas some people look at the universe, they look at the same thing and they say, gosh, this is also also big and I'm just in a tiny little random neighborhood. Like, oh, I, I, I have no place here. I'm just randomly here. Like, which of those do you identify with more when, both. when you look at the universe? They're both true. Right. I mean, I fundamentally believe that there is no cosmic purpose. There is no cosmic meaning. I do believe that we are the product of physical processes and that we are physical structures and that these physical structures just come together for a brief moment of time and then we disperse. And for that brief moment of time, can I feel alone and nihilistic? Yes. Can I feel connected and thrilled? Yes. Can I hold both of those ideas in mind simultaneously? Yes, mm. and I do. And so, yes, at times do I feel completely at sea in this gigantic cosmos. But at the same time, when I think about the fact that we've developed these mathematical ideas that describe that reality, it gives me a feeling of connection to that reality. General relativity makes me feel closer to the cosmos, as does quantum mechanics. Mm. And so, yes, alone, and yes, connected, all together in one human mind that somehow is able to grapple with these ideas.